Hello Year 6, welcome to your Wednesday maths video. I've got a little game for us to play for our starter today. Um, some of your work today will involve decimals, so I just wanted to quickly go over comparing decimals. So thinking about which ones are bigger, because um, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, because um, place value of decimal numbers can be quite challenging sometimes. So I've sent the link out with your video link today, so just click on there and it will come up like this oh, one second. it'll come up like this screen okay so you press the arrow at the bottom and then it should already have selected the decimal points we use a decimal point in decimals don't we not a comma so make sure you select that one and then press the arrow and then it will come up like this okay so you've got two decimal numbers and you've got to decide which one is bigger and you've got to use greater than or less than signs so it's some good revision of things that we have done so remember, with greater than or less than signs, it's open towards the one that is bigger. So remember, we say it's like a crocodile's mouth, don't we? Towards the bigger one. Okay. So for example, we've got here 0 0.5 and 0 0.25. I know that 0 0.5 is bigger. So then in there, I would draw one facing the bigger one. 4.02 and 4.2. 4.2 would be bigger. 8.2 and 8.15, 8.2 would be bigger, okay? So you can do it using your mouse and just drag and draw a greater than or less than sign facing the right way. And then just like we've done before with coordinates, it will count down and then you need to see how many stars you can get, okay? So don't forget to take a quick picture when you're finished so I can see how many stars you managed to get before the time ran out. Okay, so that's your starter for today. So our learning question today then is, can I generate and describe number sequences? And some of those are going to be decimal number sequences, which is why we've just done that starter. Okay, so we're doing pages 40 and 41 today. But before we even go into our workbook, I want to just quickly go over with you some general rules about number sequences and things we need to do to work out what how to answer the questions. Okay, and then you'll be able to apply this to the work in your book because we haven't done number sequences yet in year six. So it is quite new learning. Um, so some of it might be quite tricky. So let's have a look. So if you're doing whole number sequences, for example, like these numbers, so they're whole numbers. So we've got one, three, five, seven. Okay, we're starting off nice and easy. So the first thing that you need to think about when you're looking at a sequence, if you've been asked to continue the sequence, the first thing you need to think about is, are they getting bigger or smaller? Okay, and that's that applies to the work that you're doing today. So if it's decimal numbers, if it's fractions, are they getting bigger or are they getting smaller? Because then that will determine what you need to do to work out the next term. Is the gap between each number the same? Now, this is quite key, okay? Because sometimes it doesn't always follow the exact same pattern for every single term, okay? So, for example, it might be add two, then add three. Add two, then add three. Add two, then add three. So, you've got to be really, really careful when you check your sequence that it is going up in the same amount every time. So, for example, one to three, we add two. 3 to 5, we add 2. 5 to 7, we add 2. So it is the same every time. Okay? And then how big is the gap? So then you've got to work out what it's going up in or down in to work out what your next term would be. Okay? So finding the term by term rule, because you're not always going to be asked what the next term is. Sometimes you're given a full sequence and you've got to work out the rule. So, to work out the rule then, each number in a sequence, first of all, is called a term. So, you might have heard me say, work out the next term. Okay, so that's the, so it's not always a number. Sometimes it's a fraction. Sometimes it's something else. So, it's a term. Okay. So, what you need to add or subtract from a term in a sequence to make the next term is called the rule. So, for example, in the one we just looked at, it was going up in twos. So the rule for that sequence would be add two, okay? For example, add two. 
yeah, like for the one before. Okay. Sometimes though, they might go beyond zero into negative numbers. Okay, so for example, let's have a look at this one. So we've got eight, five, two, and then we need to work out the next three terms. Okay, and it says here, remember to think about the rule. Okay, so remember, first thing to do is work out whether it's going up or down. So eight to five, we're going down, aren't we? Because five is less than eight. Um, is the gap between each one the same? So the difference between eight and five is three. The difference between five and two is three. So yeah, we're going down in threes, aren't we? Okay, so now you'd have to do two minus three. And then you'd do the same and keep going. Okay, so you can only work out this one if you've worked out this one first. Okay. So decimals then. Your first question in your books today on page 40 is on decimal numbers. So you have been given the first four terms, or you've been given the sequence. So the four terms is your full sequence, and then you've got to work out what the rule is. Okay, so you're not working out the next term, you're working out the rule. So have a look at the one in your book in a minute. Okay, let's have a look at these ones. So we've got three, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5. Okay, straight away I can tell that that's going up in 0.5s. Okay, so the next one would be six, wouldn't it? After 5.5, and then it'd be 6.5, then it'd be seven, and it'd keep going like that. It's adding 0.5 each time. So work out term to term rule for each of these sequences. So for this one, it would be add 0 0.5, okay, because we are going up. Have a look at your next one. So we've got 7, 6.8, 6.6, 6.4, 6.2, 6. Okay, so we're going down, aren't we? So we've gone from 7 to 6.8, so we're definitely going down, so it's going to be subtract something. Think about what the difference is between 7 and 6.8. What the difference is between 6.8 and 6.6. .6. I can see that it's the same amount each time and it's going down by 0 0.2. Okay, so your rule for that one would be subtract 0 0.2. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So for this one then, we've got 4, 2.5, 1, 0. Point, sorry, minus 0 0.5, minus 2 minus 3.5. Okay, so for this one then, if you just did 4, take away 2.5, that would tell you what is left. Okay, so I know 4 take away 2 is 2. Take away the 0.5 would be 1.5, wouldn't it? And then you're going to have to double check that 2.5 take away 1.5 is this term. Okay, if it's not, then it might not be the same every time. Okay, I think that is enough on those. Let's have a look at the work in your book. So, question one says, write the rule to get from one term to the next for each sequence. So remember, you're writing the rule, not the next term, the rule. So, here then, we've got 5, 10.5, 16, 21.5. So for this one then, we are going up, can't we? So it's going to be add something. And if you do 10.5 take away 5, that will tell you, oh, sorry, can you see my decimal there? That will tell you what it's going up in. Okay, and then in here, you would write add something. Okay? Your next one then is 9, 8.75, 8.5, 8.25. So we're going down. So it's going to be straight away we know it's going to be subtract something. Okay. And if you do 9, take away 8.75. that will tell you the difference, okay? And then just double check it works. Before you write it in here, and the first one, just double check it works. So try it for the last two terms, 
Okay, so whatever you've said, subtract, take it away from 8.5, do, do you get 8.25? If you do, then you're going to be correct. Okay, remember, just always, always double check your answer before you move on. Okay, so that's question one. Question two, then, is moving on to using some fractions. Okay, but we're all quite confident with adding and subtracting fractions, so I think you will all be fine with these. So it says, write the next two terms in each of these sequences. Okay, so you've got two thirds, you've got one and one third, two, and two and two thirds. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these mixed numbers and change them so that they are improper fractions, because then I'll be able to see my, my sequence much, much clearer. So it's one and one third. We need to do three times one, add the one, don't we? So three times one is three, add the one is four. So that's our numerator. And remember, our denominator doesn't change. So that is the same as four thirds, okay? Then we've got two, okay? So if we're doing thirds, how many? So remember, we're doing thirds, so the denominator is going to be two. So if you do three times two, that's six. So two is the same as six thirds, okay? And let's change this one then. Three times two is six, add the two is eight. So that's your numerator, your denominator would be three again. Okay, so now we've got two thirds, four thirds, six thirds, eight thirds. It's a little bit clearer now, isn't it? Okay, so what are we going up in? We're going up in two thirds, aren't we? We're just adding two each time to our denominator, uh, sorry, our numerator. Okay, now for this one, you've got to work out the next two terms. Okay, but I'd like you to put your answer in a mixed number. So the next one is going to be, so we've got six thirds, eight thirds, Eight thirds add two thirds is going to be ten thirds. But I'd like you to change that into a mixed number. So remember, figure out how many times three goes into ten. That would be your whole number. How many have you got left over? Put that as your numerator, and three is going to be your denominator. And then add on two thirds again. That one would be twelve thirds, but remember, change it to a mixed number for me. Okay? Your next one on this question then is very similar. So if you follow the same method that we've just done together, I'm sure you'll be able to work it out. So you've got two and one fifth, one and four fifth, one and two fifth, one, and then you've got to work out the next two terms. So we're going down, aren't we? So we've got, we're gonna have to subtract. So change all of these so that they are improper fractions. So five times two is 10, add the one is 11. So that's 11 fifths. Five times one is five, add the four is nine. Okay, so you keep going. Change this one. Think about what this one is if we're doing fifths. Okay, so remember, it's going to be over five. Five times one is five, so that's the same as five fifths. Work this one out, and then keep going. Take it away, but remember, if you can, change it into a mixed number, okay? So that's your question two. Question three says Edna is trying to knit the world's longest scarf. Each day she knits 20 centimetres more than she knitted on the previous day. She knits 10 centimetres of the scarf on the first day. Okay, so I have got us a little cable ready today to help us. So I've popped the days along the top and then the amount she knitted. And if you record it in a format like this, this will help you to work it out. So on the first day then, our question said, on the first day, she knits 10 centimetres of the scarf. So first day, straight away, we can pop 10 centimetres in there, okay? Each day, she knits 20 centimetres more than she knitted on the previous day. So if she knitted 10 centimetres here, we need to do 10 add 20, okay? 10 add 20 then on the second day, she knitted 30 centimetres, okay? On the next day then, again, she knits another 20. So we're just adding 20 on each time. So 30 add 20, it would be 50, okay? So if you keep going, 
that will help you with your question. Your question says, how, how much will she knit on the fifth day? So keep going. Whatever you've got here, that's your answer. Okay. This one then says, how long will the scarf be in total after a week? Okay. And my table went up to seven days. And I did that because of seven days in a week. Okay. So if you fill in all of these to work this one out, all you've got to do is add up all of those measurements. Okay, and that will give you the answer to the second part of question three. Okay, question four then on page 41 says the rule to get the next term in the sequence is add the previous two terms together. The fifth term is 11 and the sixth term is 18. Okay, now you're being asked to find the first term and the second term. So again, I've popped it in a table. Okay, so we already know that the fifth term and the sixth term are 18, uh, sorry, are 11 and 18. Okay, so to work out this fourth term, we're going to have to work backwards. We want these two for our question, but before we can get these two, we're going to have to get three and four as well. So to work out the fourth term then, if we do 18 take away 11, that will give us a fourth term, okay? 18 take away 11 is seven. So that's the fourth term, okay? You do 11 take away seven, that will give you the third term, okay? If you then do seven take away that one, that will give you the second term and you can write it in there. Once you've got that one then, if you do the third term, take away the second term, that will give you the first term. Okay, so just keep going like I have. Do 11, take away 7, pop it in there. Do 7, take away that one, it'll give you that one. Then do 3rd, take away 2nd, and that will give you the 1st. Okay. Question 5 then. Says the sequence below is created by two rules. Okay, so it says to get an even numbered term, add 6 to the previous number. To get an odd numbered term, subtract four from the previous number. Okay, so this is one of those sequences where it's not the same every time. Okay, so you've got two different rules going on. So the first, this one says, find the next three terms in the sequence. So you've been given seven, 13, nine, and 15. Okay, so. This then is an odd number, isn't it? 15 is odd. It's not in the two times table, it's odd. So remember, back, in our, back at the beginning of our question, it says to get an odd numbered term, subtract four. So to work this one out, you need to do 15 take away four, okay? Then the next one said to get an even numbered term, add six. So whatever you've written in here, you need to add six to it, okay? Then this one, you would need to subtract four again, okay? Because remember, this is the first term, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, yeah? So this is odd because it's five, this is even because it's the sixth term, this is seven because it's the seventh, sorry, this is odd because it's the seventh term, okay? So remember for this one, you do 15 take away four, then whatever you've got for this one, you need to add six to get for this one. And then whatever you've got for this one, you'd have to subtract four for your last one, okay? The next part of this question then says, the rule from getting from one odd numbered term to the next is add two. Explain how you can work this out from the two rules above. Okay, so you just need to write something here, like, oh, it's a mixture of red and, red and black. So to get from one term to the next, to get from one, okay, one term to 
Okay, so to get from one term to the next, let's have a look what we've got to do. Okay, without having to write it out in really long words, we add six, don't we? So for, to get from nine to 15, we add six. And then to get from 15 to this one, we subtract four. So that's all we've got to write, really. Add six and subtract four. So to get from one term to the next, um, you need to um, add six and subtract four. Second, then then subtract four, and then you can just do a little calculation to show that it matches the answer. Six take away four equals two. Because remember, the question said um, the rule for getting from one odd numbered term to the next is add two. So that's why it's two. Okay, because you're adding six, take away, take it, adding six and taking four away. So really, it's going up in twos. Okay. Um, then you've got your challenge question. So your challenge question says, a charity has a new fundraising campaign. It says each day they are going to try to raise twice as much as they raised the day before. On the first day, they raised a pound. So on the second day, they'll need to raise one pound times two, so two pound. And on the third day, they'll need to raise four pound because two pound times two is four. How much money will the charity need to raise on the fifth day? So for this one then, I'd do this one like we did some of ours today and draw yourself a table. So pop, pop the first day in, pop the second day, keep going, and then you'll be able to work out how much they raised on the fifth day. If the charity meets its target every day, what will be the total amount raised in the first two weeks? Now, can you come up with a rule that you can apply to this so that you don't have to do a table for 14 days, okay? Because it's 14 days in two weeks. That would take you quite a long time. But can you come up with a rule, okay? How many days will it be before they've raised a total of one million? So once you've worked out your rule for the two-week question, you can apply that to the a million question. Then it says, do you think this is a sensible fundraising campaign? What do you think? Do you think it's achievable? Have a think for that one. Okay, so that's all of your maths work for today. Good luck with all of that. I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. Just remember to take your time, pause the video when you need to, replay bits if you need to, and then you'll be able to have a good go. Okay, don't forget to send me a photo on the email. Don't forget to include a photo of your starter for today as well. And I will see you all tomorrow.